Okay, so let's get down to why the last man. Um, it's ca kind of a really great series right now. <laughs> you know, it's about a pandemic, all right? So why the last man is a, it's a really good book. It came out in a time when you could do anything long form and vertigo. And as I said, I've mentioned many times, Vertigo was the, my go-to company to get good, good non-superhero content. Good stories, um, good, um, I just realized my headphones are on, sorry guys. And hopefully Mike's coming through now. Thank you for joining me if you're just joining me now. Um, hey, um, I've got um, Facebook on, on the laptop, so, you know, I'm able to see um Watch, you know, read the comments as they come on. So if you guys got any questions about why, I'll try to tell you as much as I can, um, as much as informed as I am about it. But so why is a really, really interesting book out of Vertigo? Like it was 60 issues. I mean, this is like, you know, when you're looking at being able to write long form, like TV shows, like, like five seasons or four seasons of TV shows, and I'm going to mention later on about the TV show that's coming up. And I didn't even know it was going to come up. I heard about it a while back, but I was just checking to make sure I get my information right, get updated, and lo and behold, there's a TV show coming up. Because they've been trying to make Why the Last Man into a lot, lot of movies. Like I think it was Joseph Gordon Lovett wanted to do as a lead character, Why Yurik. Um, and tried so many times they wanted a feature film they wanted to do a trilogy because when you got 60 issues there's so much happening on it in it and there's it's just such a great book uh and like i said i love vertigo this is vertigo before 2005 right uh, maybe even 2010 so it came out in 2002 to 2008 so six amazing years of just complete control over what was happening by the artist and the writer so Brian, Brian K. Vaughan is one of my favorites as well, right? So, you know, it's just an amazing, the artwork on this is just brilliant. The cover artwork, um, if, let me just check the cover artwork name because I sometimes, have, because everybody has their logos and stuff and, you know, it's hard to tell who's doing what sometimes. Um, hold on, let me just check. Um, yeah, so... J.G. J, J. Jones, one of my favorite cover artists, right? He's worked on a few comics that I have and hardcovers that I've got. So he's he's does quite a few of the artwork on here. Um, there's also Massimo. I think this might be J.G. Yep, this one's J.G. Jones. This is issue number six, or is it six? Yeah, so the new storyline in issue number six. So they had the first six issues, or five issues, which I've got on a graphic novel somewhere, which I couldn't find. Now, the reason I pulled this up is because I'm moving my apartment around. I pulled out all the comic stacks and stacks of comic books, box, boxes and containers of them, and it's starting to rearrange them so I can get to them now that I'm doing this these sort of live streams. Then um, I can talk about comics that I have in my collection. So I basically got the entire 60 issues of the comics, all right? This is a big pile, all right? So I was able to grab this um, a while back from uh, from a, uh, I think it was on, on Trade Me. So the first five issues came in a graphic novel, as I mentioned, and the rest were single issues. So I was like, you know, I don't mind. Somewhere or somewhere I've got, might have one of the other first five issues but the amazing thing is that the first, you know you you get amazed by the artwork on this it's just such a beautiful beautiful artwork on the covers now the artist on here is um let me see is pia guerrera she's a canadian artist um and so she's she's done a lot of work so as you can see there's more real realistic people looking artwork so it's not sort of like costumes or anything so this is a this is a real world storyline so let me just tell you about the plot behind this so why the last man is a is a post-apocalyptic science fiction comic book series created by um uh brian k vaughan and pierre guerrera published in 2002 through vertigo as i mentioned and to 2008 the series centers on Yurik brown and his pet uh Kupi Kapuch Kapuchkin Capuchin, Capuchin, Monkey, Ampersand, the only males who survived the apparent global 
androcyte, right? Androcyte. So basically what happens is that a disease goes out, right? A disease, suddenly a disease appears out of nowhere, right? A pandemic. That's why I mentioned it's a great, it's one of those books you could read and just, you know, escape into in the fantasy world. Kind of a real world we are having. So a disease goes out, um, it kills everybody that is, that's male. And I mean everybody. It just wipes out the entire world of males. So the only surviving person is Uric. And there's a reason why Uric survives and why it's called last, why the last man. Why also being the fact that it's a Y chromosome, anyone with Y chromosome wiped out. Um, so all that's left is females with the X chromosome, and um, and it basically wipes out, if I remember right, all the all uh, animals as well with the Y chromosomes, right? So I might be wrong there. Let me just grab up on that. Um, right. So all mammals, right? So all mammals. If I, I remember that right, but just wanted to check. So on July 17, 2002, so this was in real world. So he was writing as it's happening right now. So he's working through its eight, six year period of Eurex life. July 17, 2002, all living mammals with a Y chromosome, including embryos and sperm, right? So anything, like anything with a Y chromosome, right? So test tubes that um, have male sperm on it, gone, wiped off. Um, Embryos, uh, mothers with um, uh, babies, gone. Any males in there, gone. Twins, males gone, right? So it's a very, very hardcore situation. So like we're having right now, like um, our own pandemic that we're experiencing. So in why the, So this is what's happening in Why the Last Man. And so um, and many women die from disasters caused by the man's death. So say you're fly, the um, guy's flying a plane, boom, he's... He dies instantly. Plane drops. P females die because of that. Cars being driven by males, uh, trucks, whatever, boats, boom, right? So this affects the entire world. Any Everybody with a Y chromosome is gone. All living mammals, right? Uh, and as I mentioned, embryos and um, and fetuses and sperms. So... Society is plunged into chaos as infrastructures collapse and the surviving women everywhere try to cope with the loss of the man. And the belief that barring a rapid major scientific breakthrough or other extraordinary happening, extraordinary, extraordinary happening, humanity is doomed to extinction. So this is an extinction level event in this, uh, in this universe of why the last man. So Eurek's um, Eurek's mother, a member of the U.S. House of Representatives, commissions Agent 355 of the Culpa Ring to protect Eurek. So they basically realize that Eurek is alive. They send out a um, they send out a, um, a female agent to go find him, protect him. The two travel uh, to meet geneticist and cloning expert Dr. Allison Mann, who works to discover why Eurek survived and find a way to save humankind. Um, due to damage at man's laboratory in, excuse me, due to damage at man's lab, lab in Boston, the trio first traveled across the country to man's other lab in San Francisco, then to Australia and Japan. So it's a worldwide um, adventure, right? Trying to figure out how to save humanity. Um, so during the trip, the group is chased by multiple parties who know of Eurek's existence and want to capture or kill him for their own purposes. So this is so you've got the only single human male surviving member of the world, right? You know, of society. So you've got people who are out there want to destroy or kill him because of their own, you know, reason. Hey, let's, you know, let's take over. Or let's make it a, um, a feminist world and let's for you know let's finally get our way, you know, whatever. So there's groups of people, cultists and stuff like that. Then there's people that want to bring him into their own country so that they can, you know, ha make have their own society in our country. So like there's Japanese, well, uh, I think there's them trying to go hunt, hunt him down so they can bring him over to Japan so he can mate with them, you know, and, you know, scientifically create more and more of through test tubes or whatever, of Japanese people, 
So here's the thing, right? So it popped in my head. So imagine, so you've got a last surviving Caucasian male. For sheer accident, he's the only one that survives, right? And there's a reason why. And they all want to find out why. Now, so the whole point is to now use him to uh, foster society again. Kickstart the whole world all over again. Because you've got all these amazing females, talented skills and all that. But society is going to come to an end. And so an extinction level situation so the idea here is that how does how do all these different factions get to Europe and how do they how does agent 355 save Europe get him to where he needs to go to and all that so it's a 60 amazing issues non-stop action non-stop drama non-stop mystery thrills um, as I mentioned all 60 issues have amazing covers you know you can get them in so many different um like there's um hardcover box collections there's about let me just check here so there's about 10 issues uh t sorry 10 graphic novels so there are about five um graphic um five issues per volume so you got 10 of those um there's unmanned is the first one then you got the deluxe um editions there's about five of them so I'd say there's like about, um, let me see, about 10, 10 issues or six, maybe 11, 11 issues per, uh, if my maths is right, per hardcover. You know, big, huge, thick books like this, right? Big, huge books like this. Um, 11 issues of it in there. So you can, you can have them like that or you can get them in the um, same thing, maybe in a trade. It's a great, and you can probably get them on Amazon. It's a good, excuse me, it's a download from Vertigo, uh, DC Comics. And this is why I, I so despise the idea of Vertigo being totally driven into the ground. Because you don't have these amazing stories being able to be told anymore. Uh, so, long form. And I mean, like, you know, you could basically write and sell about a 10,000 and you'd still know that you you have a huge story to tell years later six years later and you still be able to complete your story so we're talking about six years later so later on and I only end up getting two of these I you know I um I think I got the the when I got this this the set here right this pile of um 55 issues um, as I mentioned early on, that I got the trade paperback first uh, as part of that 60 complete issues. Because the gentleman who um, I bought it off at that time didn't have the first five. So, but he, but I had every other issue. So this is the last one, the last man. It's, um, it's, a, uh, it's a, I think it's, if I remember right, it's a 40, 40 page, um, big, uh, what's it, 44 page finale. Rather than doing a 61 issue, they went to stop at 60 page with the final issue and you get this amazing cover and you see, um, you know, it's like, what is, what has happened? Like, you know, but you sort of, you know, you go from a cover like this to him just, you know, depressed being the last person, you know, last mammal alive, last male alive to that, you know. And it's just beautiful, beautiful painted covers and, you know, just amazing artwork within and amazing covers outside, right? So it, it's it, it's kind of like a real amazing story arcs all the way through. Uh, if I remember, there's about six different story arcs or seven different story arcs. And each one of them just keeps you wanting to read more. Now, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a really... Um, you know, it's a, such a big, huge um, chronicle, you know, um, 60 issues is a huge feat um, for a non-superhero comic book because you can't, you know, you, it's t totally different. And this is what I love about Vertigo and why I don't like what they've done with Vertigo, where they've just destroyed it. Whoever came in, the guy who came in, who took over Vertigo after the two female editors were had been released, or basically just straight to the side like Shelley Bond and uh, I always forget um, 
Oh, I always forget her name. She's, I'm, hold on, let me just check, because she's amazing. Um, uh, somewhere, I can't remember. Sorry, um, you guys probably know what I mean. But, but yeah, Shirley Bond was her assistant, and, um, and they just worked for about almost 20 years hard out just making Vertigo one of the best things that we could we we saw outside of superhero comics in in Amer in western comics especially out of america so stuff like as i mentioned before uh hell hellblazer swamp thing um gosh animal man just just the great great books right um just amazing arcs and chronicles um there's also northlanders uh, which is about Vikings before Vikings became so popular, all right? Um, and so let me just go, go over to um, IMDb. So there was two short shorts, um, fan made um, Why the X Men um, short films. I'll put the link in later. Uh, there's one called Why the Last Man Rising, which is about 20, 20, 20 minutes long. Uh, there's another one that was called um, Why the Last Man, and that was, and these are all fan-made things, uh, fan-made um, shorts, so that, you know, there was no money involved or anything like that, so there was another, that was a half an hour long one, so I'll put the, um, put the link in later, and so the great thing about this is that they've been trying for, since 2008, to get this off the ground to be a movie. Uh, of course, we know there's so many, so many zombie movies, so many pandemic movies, so many, uh, you know, z vampires and so on, all over the place, right? I mean, if you if you could have done um, Walking Dead, why it wasn't this picked up straight away? So what happened was there was a bit of bit of whole thing about this about the rights of this. So there was cancellation of the film adaptation. So the film rights to this, excuse me. So, the film rights uh, to the series were acquired by New Line Cinema. They're the same guys that worked on The Hobbit and stuff, um, the shareholders and that. Uh, so, they were, sister, they were also part of the Warners, so they're sister company to Vertigo. Um, and in July 2007, screenwriter Carl Ellsworth and um, director DJ Caruso were attached to the project with David S. Guaya as producer. So, of course, if you know Hellboy, David S. Guaya worked on that with the screenwriting. Now, Caruso intended on finishing the script in the summer and filming during the fall of 2008. The script would, be, would rewrite the original script, uh, draft written by Jeff Vinter. Although Vinter's draft was faithful to the original comic book and com considered by many to be a success, the higher-ups at New Line Cinema uh, seemed unable to fully embrace the material. So I don't understand why if you if you this is like 2008 right so 2008 people weren't interested and in really into comics if you remember right um if you remember well iron man wasn't a big thing right now you know uh, batman was doing its thing uh, iron man wasn't as popular so the whole thing about relying on comic books as a medium and you know if you know the history of um the relationship between hollywood and comics they always see it as like something that's not really worthwhile. They'd rather go to books than go to something that's with pictures in it, even though they know it's so good, even if they do believe it's good. But the thing is that um, the rights, right? So as you know now, it's like everything. You can go, you can go on, um, let me see, on Netflix, and you can see a TV show from Africa about superheroes or if you go to um, you know South America right you'll see something out of Spain or sort of um, sorry um, Mexico and stuff like that you'll see all these different things um, and I'm sure that uh, at least got one India's got superheroes now you know with their comic um, based on sort of like Hollywood style um, superhero so but you had all these different things so there was also uh, Shia LaBeouf was um, going to be um, was going to be work on it, and as I mentioned, um, there was um, also talk of 
Joseph Gordon Lovett being very, very big and really wanted to promote it. But of course, uh, by 2012, um, it fell apart. Uh, the Portig Port Portuguese did a loose um, adaptation of it as well as I was talking about South America. Uh, is Portugal in South America? I think so. I might be wrong. Yeah, not so good with my um, countries all over the place. So, by 2003, the script was supposed to, uh, 2013, sorry, the script was supposed to be cl close to finishing with producer uh, Goya announcing that, yeah, we got, it, you know, the script is as dead, script, a script that's as close as it's ever been and suggested the film could go into production in 2014. Of course, in 2020 now, nothing's had happened. Uh, so later on, it's, they announced in, 2000, uh, in 2014, 20, uh, 24th of September, Confirmed by to, uh, Twitter, the film was not happening, but it is in trusted hands, the creators. So I guess the creators got back to the creators, right? And that Brian K. Vaughan um, probably decided, well, you know, this isn't, I, I don't want my, um, my um, work being pulled all over the place. And so what happens next? It goes into limbo for about six more years. Say, so, uh, five, six years, all right? So when you're doing, when you go into TV productions, it takes at least about two years of organization, uh, pre-production, uh, prelim work, getting the actors together, especially getting the script together before anything can happen, trying to get a director, trying to find out who will attach themselves to it. So what's happened is, the big news now is that they've got all the people there, uh, they've got uh, Ben, uh, well, we got Diane Lane, who's probably going to play the mother. Uh, you've got, let me see here, uh, Ben Shinetsu. Let me find out who this guy is going to play the lead character. Um, now, while that's happening, uh, Brian K. Vaughan has worked on so many books, right? He's, run, he's worked on Ex Machina, which is, if I remember right, is also out of... Um, um, Vertigo, uh, another great book, um, Pride of um, Baghdad, and of course, my favorite, uh, one of my favorites, Saga. All right, and Saga, Saga, and I'll talk about Saga another time, but it's, it was one of my most recent ones. Uh, that he's been working on. I think it's close to finishing or they might do a second volume or something, but it's another great book. He's won many awards. So the other one there is Runaways. He did for um, um, for Marvel Comics. Of course, you know the Runaways TV series. I think they had two, um, I saw the, I think seven or eight episodes of the first season. And I think it's largely based, if I remember right, it's largely based on his, comic book run and I've read the comic book run there. The other recent one he's worked on is he's been working on is Paper Girls, which is really cool. I love Paper Girls. Really nice sci-fi fantasy series about Paper Girls, right? Back in the 80s. Um, now he's also been a showrunner and executive producer on shows like um, Stephen King's Under the Dome and he's worked with many people and he's yeah, he's, he's just a great, um, great writer. And I, I really appreciate his writing. So let's see who this guy, who's going to be acting in it. So let's see. Right, so Ben Schnitzer, Schnitzer he's, he's worked on, um, on Warcraft as uh, Kadga, Kadga, he was Max in The Book Thief, uh, 2003. He's been in The Giant. Let me see, what was The Giant? Right, so the, that's a, um, they came out last year. The teenager's um, small town life has changed up forever when a series of murders begin on the same night that her missing boyfriend suddenly appears. So that's a movie there, The Giant, 2019. Um, He's also was in Snowden and the Grizzlies and Gone Hollywood. So I think this is his big major 
also there was in uh, another sh- a series called the truth about the harry corbett corbett quibet affair all right so let's talk about um yeah so they're going to do a 10 episode series so far on why the ex um last man and the good thing about this is that i mean you're doing a tv series you can really 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 dive into the characters if you're doing a movie you really can't because you're trying to go squish you know like unless you're doing a trilogy even then you can't squash so much information into a a, um, a trilogy um and so if or if you're doing a standalone movie so a 60 issue comic book like why the x-men right you're not gonna but you're not gonna have a good story unless it's in a long form series of right and we've seen this on, on the news right now right the ppes so you're not gonna you're not gonna get a good story out um but now because they're gonna do 10 episode tv series i guess they were um they've got all their the writing's done they've got the actors sorted um and um let me see they've got yeah so i guess because unless they've all the they've already have the filming shot um it won't be coming soon all right so you're probably looking at probably another year down the road but i'm not sure if it's coming to uh, netflix or hulu let me just check here just to make sure um fx so actually so it's on the fx um cable network in the u.s so this will be one of their um, major shows now if i remember right fx did the um, the driver one transporter yeah i think fx did the transporter if i remember right so yeah so i hope that they stay um as close to the books uh, to the comic books as possible because it's such a great mystery drama series that you don't need to mess around with and keep if you stay loyal to what's happening in the story you'll you'll you know the story will be so so good it's because there's nothing because it doesn't it's not like a you know a superhero thing where you gotta have lots of lots of um you know costumes lots of cgi it's it's a grounded real time real life series hey jack um and so thanks for watching by the way guys for those of you guys are joining in and been following um so something like you know um the why the last man is going to be a really good read but it's also going to be a good a very good tv show right because there is no over the top action or anything like that it's all just everybody going about their life every day in a pandemic situation so it is a really 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 good um story 60 issues really worthwhile so that's La- why the last man and written by uh, brian k vaughan artwork by um pierre guerra um canadian artist as i mentioned she's she's worked on quite a few work as well let me just get to pierre just so she's uh american born canadian comic book artist best known for her work and co-creator on last why the last man she's also um does does regular cartoons for them for the new yorker and also the now um close mad mad magazine she's also um is is author on um an editor on image comics as well so she's she's her work i mean it's you know it's very like like i said this this book will translate to a really good tv show hands down and i don't know why it's taking them so long but of course with live streaming you know with um sorry with streaming being the biggest thing right now and of course it is going to change everything the the pandemic that we're facing is going to change everything on how people behave at cinemas people will get so used to being at home and watching live streaming tv shows will have more funding and we've noticed that right as someone who watches uh, the business side of things being um being someone who's actually got a history in film and stuff and studying having studied film knowing and understanding the workings of it that there is much more money went spent more wisely in tv than it is in cinema because you don't know if the movie's going to fail like we you know we've noticed a lot of movies fail right 
like I mentioned the other week, that uh, underwater lost about a third, like I made only a third of its budget uh, by by the cinemas because people were just in, wasn't in, weren't interested. Same thing with uh, Terminator: Dark Fate. Just didn't like the fact that you know what happened with John Connor, and so stuff like that. You you. But then if you go to um, say if you get someone like Netflix, Hulu. Uh, Amazon, um, Apple TV behind you, and I've been watching, noticing a lot of the patterns that are happening. I was checking on Netflix just before to see what was, what are the new shows coming out, and they're coming out from all over the world. So if you've got a real life, um, you know, a real world um, situation um, storyline, there is no major effects needed. There's no visual. Um, costume designs like you know like if you're saying if you're doing like something like lord of the rings you know and similarity and stuff like that you don't have to have um you know apart from your normal cuts and bruises makeup uh, or whatever you don't need all these special effects and so the cost on the budget is so low that all you need is to get the right actors to do their job really well and if 10 episodes you can go well hey here's a season Let's see how it does. If it does well, we do another season. And like I said, each of these, um, each of the sixty issues, there's about um, there's about five story um, story arcs, um, five issues per story arc. So you're looking at about ten story arcs. So they could probably close this off in about three seasons. And the way things are going, you know, people will will be into watching more TV than ever before. Uh, yeah, so that's all I got to say about why the last man. You know, it's just a really, really, really uh, good series, worthwhile reading about a real life, um, real, real time uh, pandemic where all mammals, and I mean entire world full of mammals with what? Um, hey, thanks, Jack. Thank you. Uh, as Jack's saying, great to hear you talk. Cheers, bro. Uh, so. So all, just recapping, so all mammals with a Y chromosome just keel over. That's it. That's the basis of the story, that they just keel over. It doesn't matter if they're embryo or their uh, mothers are pregnant, or, you know, or uh, test tubes. So anything, or animals, Y chromosome is wiped out and there's only one person, Uric Brown who survives and they want to find out why and they want to use him to repopulate the world so that the world doesn't you know pass up. wipe out um so yeah as like i said i mean i only thought about it because i'd forgotten i owned it because i've got so many comics somewhere else so many i mean everywhere and so pulling it i'm going wait what's this you know why isn't this in their sleeves usually you have the, i have the comics in their sleeves and uh, you know, all of them get uh, you know they get the which which is what I will be doing next. They get sleeves and all that, and then I thought, oh, that's right. I just basically didn't have to, didn't have the sleeves, and I had to put them away. So I mean, look at the cover art on these, right? The cover art alone is worth the money if you get them. But of course, these came out in two thousand two and two thousand eight, uh, based you know based on the pandemic, fictional pandemic, and you've just got. Um, amazing artwork right on the covers but the stories the stories are brilliant uh the sorry the story arcs are brilliant and uh so the other person that, um there's some uh there's mostly pierre was working on this but there's also goran uh goran comes in and does some work um but still very similar to what um pierre is doing her artwork so that's a great thing so when you have someone you know uh pierre probably had take a break from doing it, work on some other work, came, you know, he came in and did a filler, and his work is just like her work, so, um, thank you for watching, um, hopefully you guys are well, where you are, and, um, that you had a excellent, um, even though you weren't able to, spend, you know, if you were able to, if you weren't able to, uh, Easter with your families, um, and thanks for joining me again, I'll catch you around soon, and see how the rest of the week goes. But um, kakiteano. Check it out, guys.